morning. Most wonderful God, we gather in your house offering many praises. May the heavens be open for us that we may catch a glimpse of that light and love that transforms our common days with the beauty God of our making. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. All right, kids, come on up. We're going to play tug of war. Anybody want to play? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, you guys are on that side. I'm on this side. It's going to be against me, so you should be pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to play tug of war. You think you can? You think you can? Oh, do you think you can? Do you think you can beat me? No. Let me see. I think I outweigh them. Hold on. No. I think I do. What? What do you say? No. You should say no. You're so thin, Pastor. <laughs> Okay, before we, do you think you're going to win? Yeah. Yeah. You seem thrilled. Pull a little, give it a little tug. Let me see what I'm up against. Oh, yeah, there. Okay, hold on. You know what? I don't play fair. Ben. That's my game. Who do you think the boss of this place is? Oh, Jesus. And Ben. <laughs> They are cheating. It's <laughs> set. Go. Oh, John, we can pull. <laughs> temptation. Okay? Do you know what that means? You're tempted to slap your sister. <laughs> no, you would never do that. You're tempted to talk back to your mother. You would. Or grandma. <laughs> you're tempted to do, what are some of the things that you're tempted to do that are wrong? That you know are wrong, but you give into it anyway, and you don't know why. Oh, see? Hey, he always slaps her. I was right. I didn't even know that. <laughs> what, do, what do you do that you're tempted to do that maybe you haven't done it, but there's a real temptation there. Anybody? What are you tempted to do? I'm tempted to spend too much time on my phone. <laughs> Anybody tempted to do that? It's like, she's looking at me going, <laughs> you don't have a phone yet? She does. <laughs> Gaming, phones, are you tempted to spend way too much time on that? and not get other stuff done, or you got it pretty balanced. No. <laughs> what about you? What are you tempted to do? Eli scratches your head, so you smack him back. Okay. So we're tempted to do these things, aren't we? Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes, they're so tempting, they're so tempting, like the peanut butter dark chocolate doves that are in my fridge. They're so tempting. How many calories are there? There's a lot. If you eat one, it's okay, but then if you go back three times, it's a problem. So that temptation is real. That temptation is real. And did you know in the Bible that the Apostle Paul, did you know the Apostle Paul wrote most of the New Testament? You know all those letters in the New Testament? Ephesians and Corinthians, you know all those? It's all in the New Philippians, Romans. Yeah, the Apostle Paul wrote that. Listen to what he says in Romans 7. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. So he gave, he gave it a temptation a lot. And this is the Apostle Paul. I mean, this is like a really Jesus-loving guy, right? We all love Jesus, but sometimes there's big temptations out there. Was this big temptations over here? 
Would you consider us bigger than you? Would you consider us to maybe outweigh you guys? Yeah. <laughs> right? So the best news is that because Jesus was tempted, and so are we, and so is Paul, he wants to be on your side. He wants to be on your tug of war side. And he's not going to be just on your side just so that you don't fall into temptation, although that's a good thing because each of us have the power of the Spirit in us. We have God in us if we believe in Jesus. And we can say, walk away from that temptation, and God will give us a way out. But sometimes we don't stop to do that. We just fall into the temptation. Or it's like a reaction, right? Scratch, slap, right? <laughs> I know. Instead of scratch, now, Eli, let's not scratch big sister, right? That would be a better response, wouldn't it? No. <laughs> He'd still keep doing it, yeah. But you're bigger than him. All you got to do is hold his hand, right? And you can still out. That would change one day. That will change one day. Does he try to bite you? Then he bites you in the butt. Well, what's your butt doing in his face? I want to know, first of all, what is happening in that house? Don't you love from the mouths of babes? So, Jesus wants to not only keep you from temptation, he wants to win. He wants to win. And with Jesus, if Jesus was there on your side, literally, God in the flesh was there. Do you think he could have beat all these guys? Yes, yeah. Yeah. He probably wouldn't even have had to touch the rope. He probably would have just went, <laughs> and they would have all fell on me. <laughs> so, just so you know, you got somebody bigger and stronger that's inside you. All you have to do is pray, you know, I don't want to slap my brother, but he bugs the heck out of me, right? And maybe walk away. God, I mean, try it. Try it. What do you got to lose? What do you got to lose? Because when you slap your brother, what does mom say? Don't slap your brother, right? Does she put you in the room? Do you get a timeout? Yeah. Mm, does he? Good. <laughs> and you do nothing to bother him, do you? <laughs> you go upstairs. Good thinking. So let's pray that we are not tempted, and when we are tempted, we think about talking to Jesus first about it, right? Because we can be tempted to do things that are not so good, right? Like roll your eyes at your pastor. <laughs> Nobody did. I'm just saying. That's not probably a good thing to do. You ever roll your eyes at your mom? And she just goes. Like that. We could not roll our eyes at our parents. If I rolled my eyes at my mother. Hey, Mom, are you watching? <laughs> that would have, what are you doing? What would have been, what are you doing? Right? Yeah, so you guys got it easier than us. Let's pray that we don't fall into temptation. I'll give you candy, then you can leave my presence. Ready? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these kids, and we do thank you to re for reminding us that when temptation comes, you are on our side. You are the winner. You've already defeated all of this. All we need to do is to go to you and ask for help. And we can walk away from doing what it is that we don't want to do. And then when we do, Lord, we still go to you and apologize and ask for forgiveness and try to do better the next time. So we thank you for knowing that we are capable of not falling into temptation when we go to you first and ask for help. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I got sour candy just for you. There's all that. See this? Do you see the sour candy? You got a big one. They're little. Yeah, you can, those are little. You can have a couple, three. Three little ones. I don't know why I got so much stuff in my food. Okay, are you guys going down to Sunday school? Here, just take this with you. Goodbye. No, I got it. No, I got it. Oh, wait, give some to, give some to Adrienne. Okay, now take that downstairs. Who's going down with them? Oh, there they are in the back. Maggie and Mr. Rob. See ya. You're welcome. <laughs> Reading from Ephesians 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. That was a happy word, wasn't it? I know. I know. Have you guys ever used that saying when pigs fly? Have you ever used that? When pigs fly, if you know me, and you know me well, 
You know, I would use that saying when someone would say, hey, I got a free ticket for us to go skydiving out of a plane. What would I say, Brian? Sure, my pig's black, right? <laughs> he knows me, no way am I getting out in an airplane. I don't care, they can be free. I'm not skydiving, I don't want to die that early. So, <clears throat> I would do it. So basically, when we use that saying, when pigs fly, what are we, what are we meaning? Never. It's never gonna happen, right? Did you know that this is an idiom? Not an idiot, it's an idiom, and it's been around since the 1600s in some kind of fashion. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we use it in, you know, when pigs fly, that's never going to happen kind of thing, or when pigs grow wings, you've heard it said that way, right? So it's been around since the 1600s. So get ready with my picture, not yet. Okay. So. We're basically saying it's never going to happen, it's impossible, right? Would you also agree it's kind of unbelievable? I don't believe it's going to happen. Would you agree that's what it is? Well, you're all wrong because a pig has flown. <laughs> See, I am the first pig to fly. And what was that year? 1909. 1909. So there you go. <laughs> We're going to talk about miracles. That's what we're going to talk about for the next few weeks. We're going to talk about the miracles of Jesus. And I think a lot of us think about miracles in two extremes. Maybe not us as church, as the church, but everybody in the world. I think we have two extremes when it comes to miracles. On one extreme, we don't think they, that they happen. You know, there's unbelievers that don't believe in miracles. It was a coincidence. It was karma. Right? You heard that? Right? So there's that. There's Christians who don't believe in miracles, or they believe that miracles can happen, but no miracle's going to happen for me. It'll happen when pigs fly. Right? Have you known some Christians like that? Every time I pray, it never works. How come I don't get that? I have a friend who's like, how come I don't get that big burning bush or that big bulletin board? I said, are you Moses? Are you going to lead people out of, you know, exile? She's like, no, but I would like a bulletin board. I would like a flashing neon sign that says do this, right? So we have this, these extremes. We have <coughs> miracles. <coughs> they don't happen. That's coincidence. That's <coughs> science. That's, you know, that's the way it is. It's karma. Then we have the other side of the equation, the other extreme. Now listen to this. Everything is a miracle. I went to Costco yesterday with my sister and I got out with less than 100, bet, 100 bucks. It's a miracle, right? <laughs> I mean, you spend a lot of money. Everything's 10, 12 dollars a piece. You buy 10 things, you're over 100 bucks, right? Or I went to Meyer. it was a Saturday, and I got that one spot right there in front of the produce side because all I needed was some romaine lettuce and a stinking onion. That's all I wanted to do was run in and get out, and it's a miracle. There was a parking spot right there next to the handicap. Isn't that cool? It's a miracle. So we think everything's a miracle. You know, my daughter finally cleaned up her room. I couldn't see her anymore. There were so many clothes over her head, right? It's a miracle. Not everything is a miracle. And yet, miracles exist. Or we have some church people that think, you know what? Miracles happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus was walked the earth. I believe it to be true, but it ain't going to happen for me. So when pigs fly, that's when it'll happen. Well, I hope you believe in miracles. I believe in miracles because I had a miracle. And so I told this story before, but I'm going to share it again for people who might not know. When I was working at the TV station, I worked from home a few days a week and had to go down to North Grand Rapids a few days a week. And we lived in Kingsley. And if you know my um, driveway, I have a long driveway. It goes right up to the garage. And then I have a paved part that you can back up into so that you can turn around and go that way. So I had an in-home um, babysitter. Uh, caregiver lady. She was an older lady, um, but still pretty spry, and she drove this Pontiac or whatever, and so I decided to let her go early. It was a Friday, like I'm done talking to people from New York, go, and so she's like, okay, great. I was going to put on my snowsuit, put it on, got Laura dressed. She was about three, Nicole was about 18 months, put Nicole on the sled, put the, you know, the sled rope around my waist, and so we're walking, Laura's walking, so let's say this is the turnaround, and we're walking in the turnaround, okay, just mostly on the grass of it, but here's the turnaround. Nicole is right here, because I'm pulling it, right? Laura's in front of me, it's okay, my shoe's untied. <laughs> so, okay, so I bend down to tie her shoe, 
And I'll see where the girls are. Girls right here. Girl right here. Now, see if they're pretty even with me. I look up. There's a bumper of a car right here. Right here. Right here. And all I did was push and scream, stop! And she stopped. Oh my God. Now, I'm here. The girls are right even with me. There's, I mean, Bumper was right here. Right here. Because I was close enough to touch him. I didn't know what to do. She stopped. I grabbed the girls, picked them up, dragged Laura by the arm, got into the house, told her to call 911. I don't know what I was going to find when I got in the house. They were all puffed up in their snowsuits and everything. I don't know what I was going to find. The EMS come running. You say a kid's been hit by a car, they come running. They come running. They checked out Laura. They say, well, she's missing a boot and a sock, but her foot's okay. And they go, hold up your foot. And she's like, <laughs> guess where her boot was? <clears throat> Underneath the wheel of the car. Oh, oh my God. I'm telling you. And then they got Nicole out of her one suit thing, checked her out, and they said, she's fine. They go, but did you notice? Here's the exhaust pipe. Wow, right on her face. Oh, my God. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Yes. I believe in miracles. Yes. And if you don't believe in miracles or you don't think they're for you or you think it's going to happen when pigs fly, I hope by the end of this sermon series, which is going to be about four to eight weeks, that you will believe in miracles again and that God can use you to be a miracle for someone today. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Let's talk about miracles. So what is a miracle? What is a miracle? Is it when your teenager who lives like a pig pen, you know, from Charlie Brown? Is, is it a miracle when they decide to clean their room? No, that's not a miracle, right? When you've got a parking spot, that's not a miracle. Now, if everybody left at the same time at Meyer, all 125 cars all left at the same time, and you've got an open park, that might be a miracle, right? <laughs> but you find in a miracle with one parking spot, that's not a miracle. A miracle is when God intervenes in the world and it can't be explained by natural or scientific laws. I am not strong enough to move a car, am I? I had to get four guys just to pull some little kids. So I'm not strong enough to move a car. How did Nicole get this on her face, which is clearly under the car, without getting run over? How did Laura's boot get underneath a tire and her foot was fine because there was a miracle God intervened and said not today Satan because that timing was Satan obviously right that timing was evil I'm going to have that old lady back up she was old but I love her I'm going to have her back up at the exact time that Colleen's bringing those kids it's a miracle a miracle is when God intervenes in the world and you can't explain it away. Now, I'm going to show you this slide. All of Jesus' miracles can be put into at least one of these four categories. There's a couple that don't really fit, but most of them do. They're either miracles of healing, miracles of protection. Mine was a miracle of protection, right? Miracle of provision, and miracles of deliverance. Today we're going to discuss one that's not talked about much in churches. That's the miracles of deliverance. Okay? So deliverance. I'll, I'll show you what I mean by this. We're going to use this scripture in Matthew 17 where Jesus delivers a demon out of a boy. Okay? Now stay with me. Don't think we're in Supernatural on Netflix series right now. <laughs> stay with me. The boy's father prays to Jesus. He says, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. We might think that's epilepsy, right? Might have been. But then listen to this. Jesus said, bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. Now it's weird. <laughs> now it just got weird, right? It just got creepy. That's why people, most pastors don't preach on, they either go to two extremes. Everything's a devil. You know, we have two extremes when it comes to evil. We have two extremes. We either have, eh, 
I don't believe in that stuff. You start believing in, you know, demons, right? It starts looking like a Netflix series. You know, everything's a demon. Um, you know, my mother-in-law's a demon. <laughs> the president's a demon. The Democratic Party's a demon. The Republican parties are full of demons, right? I had a lady say, there are. They're full of demons. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I'll talk about that. So, or we think everything is done by Satan. Satan made me go back for those four other pieces of double chocolate. He did. The devil made me do it. Right? The devil made me do it. Right? Or I disagree with someone in the church. Well, they must be being influenced by Satan. <laughs> really? I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I got the spirit of God in me. Nobody influence. Satan can't influence me. All Satan can do is tempt us. Right? Amen? Amen? Now, Satan can control and influence others that are not believers. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's what Paul's talking about today. So we usually go to two extremes when it comes to evil and evil forces, but Satan and demons are real. I'm going to repeat this after I say it the first time. Not every problem we encounter is caused by evil forces, but more problems are caused by evil forces than we realize. So I'll say it again. Not every problem we encounter is caused by evil. Sometimes we just disagree, folks. Sometimes we just disagree and we make a bad decision. You know, we're, I, I'm not following Satan. You're not following Satan. You're believers in Jesus Christ, right? And if you aren't, after this sermon, you might want to be. <laughs> but, not, but more problems are caused by evil than we realize. So the greatest trick that the devil has used and continues to use is to try to make the world believe he doesn't exist. But evil exists. Look at Apostle Paul's scripture again today. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities that are being controlled and giving in to the teachings of demons, against the powers of this dark world, that's Satan and his demons, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. When you become a, Je when you become a Jesus follower, you enter into the spiritual warfare. You enter into a battle. But guys, you're not going to grab your sword because the sword, when you go into Paul's after this, he talks about the armor of God. The armor of God is resistance. It's a resistance armor. So you show up in the battle. You go forth. You have your sword, which is the Bible, but you don't beat people over the head with it. You show up and the gospel does the work. Just like this. These kids were never going to beat this temptation right here. Never. Till they grow up and get stronger, right? They were never going to be all of these guys. We are never going to defeat evil unless we use it in power of Jesus. And that's what miracles are when Jesus is with us. So, let's talk about Satan. Not too much because he doesn't deserve much. But we have to be aware that he's, he's, he's around, Okay. <clears throat> the Bible tells us who Satan is. He's not a man dressed up in a red suit with a pitchfork. That would be hard to believe, wouldn't it? Right? He's not that guy that runs the bar in Lucifer and the Netflix series. Even though that's a good series to watch, it's got some biblical tones to it. It's really very good. It's also crazy because Lucifer is um, is a bar owner, club nightclub owner. He plays the piano very well. You know, it's crazy. Anyway, <clears throat> and he does good. Lucifer doesn't do good. Satan does not do. So, Satan was an angel created by God called Lucifer. You can find it in Isaiah. You can also find it in Revelation. Because Lucifer was given free choice. So God created the world, right? He created angels. He created angels. Angels are spiritual beings. They can take on bodily form, just like they did when they probably spoke to Mary. They can speak. They have minds that can think. So if they have mind, you remember, don't be afraid, Mary. Don't be afraid, Joseph, to take Mary as your husband. They're thinking. They have a message from God, right? And so, and so it's God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, creation, angels, humans. Animals are in there somewhere. Animals have natural instincts, right? Looking at my DNR guy, right? So here's your angels. They can think, what did God create for human beings? Free will. Free choice. Right? We're not robots. 
Well, angels have free will and free choice. So what happened to Satan? He decided he wanted to be like God. Now, it's said that Lucifer was the most beautiful angel. It was an archangel, they said. Beautiful angel. Great leader in heaven. And so he's full of pride. He says, I'm going to be like God. And God says, eh, goodbye. Kicks him out of heaven along with a third of the angels. These are the demons. Demons are fallen angels that do the bidding of Satan. Satan is a fallen angel. You believe in angels, right? You better believe in angels. They're in the Bible. Then you better believe in demons because those are the fallen angels that do the work of Satan. You are not going to probably be tempted by Satan. Putin might be because he's a pretty well-known guy, right? You're going to be tempted by demons, okay? Sometimes we're just tempted by sugar addiction, <laughs> right? So not everything I'm getting tempted by is evil, <clears throat> but there are things that are evil. Because I think if we ever saw, and maybe some of you have, if you've ever seen evil, you'd remember it, right? So here's Revelations 12 to back me up with the fact that the dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. John wrote Revelation. Don't believe that? You think it's apocalyptic or it's you know a metaphor? Listen to Jesus' own words in Luke 10. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Because of course Jesus was there before the creation of the angels. So he saw him tempt Adam and Eve. God said, eh, goodbye. Right, put the cherubim in front of the Garden of Eden. Jesus saw all this, right? So Satan and demons are real. And they use all kinds of tricks to try to tempt us. One of their biggest tricks is um, polarization, division. And they like to do division in a church, right? Now remember, we're not controlled by evil. We are believers in Jesus Christ. Jesus has already won, right? They are defeated foes, but they're fighting for every soul that doesn't know Jesus. I mean, it's going on. We can't see it, but it's going on. And we can't win against them in our own strength. Even with the power of God in us, we can't win on our own. We can only do it through an intervention or an intervening of God. Get it? So if you think you can go out with spiritual warfare and take your Bible and start, you know, judging people and doing this and that, you're just going to add fuel to the fight. <clears throat> and Satan's going to get that. He's going to take that piece and run with it. So division is one of their big things they like to do. Discrimination, we've seen that, haven't we? Greed, has anybody seen any greed in this world? <laughs> Why are eggs five dollars? Good Lord, right? Both believers and unbelievers can be tricked by evil, okay? Demons are very good at tempting us to sin. And here's another thing they're good at, distracting us from doing God's will. However, demons cannot be Elon Musk. He could be, but he's not a demon, right? Have you seen people? He's a demon. Is he? Now, Bezos, I think, is a demon, but he's not. <laughs> and Zuckerberg, I don't know where he falls. No, they're not demons. Paul said we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against evil. Okay? So put that aside. When someone disagrees with you, whether they're a believer or not, we should be praying for their souls, for Pete's sakes. If they're an unbeliever, they are being utilized by Satan. There's no middle fence when it comes with Jesus. If you're not a believer... Of God in Christ, you're not with God. You're against God. You may not think you are. Everything's great. You believe what you want to believe. I'll believe what I want to believe. Folks, that's not how it works. There's no gray area with Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about the non-essentials that we argue over. Homosexuality, abortion. You know, I'm a pro-lifer. You can bring that up with me. It kind of goes with the job. <laughs> it kind of goes with the job. However, I do not want to ever alienate someone who's had an abortion. Amen? They need grace. They need love. They need to know that that baby is with Jesus. Right? And, and we could go on and on about them. Those are not essentials. You know what's essential? Is we are out there in a battle, folks. 
We're in a battle. Are we arming ourselves with that resistance? You know, the, the helmet of truth, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, or I probably got that wrong, but, you know, the belt of truth, I think it is. Somebody had something. I don't know. I did, never did a sermon series on that. Maybe I should someday. So, <clears throat> Here's something interesting. Let me go back to the scary thing that I wanted to talk about. Another scary thing. Oh, my gosh. The Apostle Paul writes in his first letter to Timothy, chapter 4, the Spirit, capital S, of God, Holy Spirit, clearly says that in later times, that's now, we're in later times than when the Apostle Paul wrote this to Timothy, right? Some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. We've seen it. Mars Hill was a huge Christian church. Mark Driscoll, eh, I don't believe in this Christian stuff anymore. I'm done. It was a huge church. Thousands and thousands worshipped there. And he literally denounced the Spirit of God and walked away from God. Oh my God. What are you thinking, man? And that's a scary thing. You know, we're worried about arguing about whether we should, you know, I don't know, move a pew. <laughs> and things are things are happening. It is scary out there. The people who do not know Jesus are susceptible to the teachings, it says, the teachings of demons. Demons aren't just there to go, boo. They're there to teach you how to divide your family, how to polarize a nation, how to, um, if you're not a Republican, I'm not going to love you. If you're not a Democrat, I'm not going to love you. You know, that's where we've gone, right? We've gone to our camps, to these extremes. And guess who loves that? Satan and his demons. That's what he's teaching. And I hate to say it, but some of us are falling for it. Right? So, we are not fighting people, the apostle says. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits that are teaching people to hate, teaching people to tempt them, to divide. And when a house is divided, it falls, right? There are forces at work that stand in opposition to the good news, which is bigger and stronger. So do you know what we have that we take out into the world? The gospel. So let's look at that. Let's look at that um, scripture with Jesus and the miracles of this guy. So do we notice what's in this, this miracle thing, this miracle thing with Jesus, in this deliverance miracle with the kid, the evil that was in this kid? Um, I want to look at it again, Matthew 17. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at the moment. What was going on in this miracle, okay? First and foremost, there was prayer, right? He says to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me, or on him, on his son. Lord, have mercy. He's praying, right? Who shows up? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The gospel. Jesus is the walking, talking, breathing gospel, right? God incarnate, there he is. Born in a barn, there he is. Born of a virgin, there he is. Grew up, there he is. Lived a life to show the world who God is. Died to death, resurrected, seated at the right hand. Here's the gospel standing right here. He shows up. Guess what the church has as part of what they do for miracles, as part of what we do for miracles? We have the gospel. We show up and we have the gospel. We, we are the representatives of Christ. We show up in the dark world and we live the gospel. We preach the gospel in some sense. We talk about the gospel. Hey, this crazy pastor did this tug of war thing with these kids. It's hilarious. You should have been there. Or you should have seen it. Or this is what I read in this devotion today. Or whatever. Are we doing that? Because every time, wherever the gospel goes, the word of God goes. So we have the gospel. We are the church. We are the only way people who don't know God, who are being influenced and controlled by Satan and his demons, will ever hear the good news. We are the church. This is it. 
and it's getting smaller and smaller, and people are leaving the faith and literally walking away from Christ. Literally. We're, we're it, folks. We're the ones that bring the good news. As Isaiah said, oh, are those feet beautiful that brings the good news. Now, I didn't say go out there and preach against somebody who is, you think, is living in sin. Don't do that. That's a non-essential. Now, have your belief. I'm not saying you have to agree. I'm not saying we have to agree. But that's not the topic for discussion. The topic for discussion is, here's the gospel. Do you know Jesus? Do you know what he can do? Do you know the power that lives inside of me? I'm not great. This sermon is not so good written, is it? <laughs> Ben's always like, what is this guy? No, he doesn't ever say that. You but I know he thinks it. You skipped a page. I did skip a page, I know. <laughs> and I ain't going back, Ben. I might go back, you better follow. So, and he will. What I'm saying is that, you know, I was a marketer. I was a sales rep. I mean, that's what I did for a living. I was all about the money. And you want to talk about swearing? I could swear the best sailor under the table. Because that's what you did when you're in sales. I didn't smoke, because I hated it. But I would, you know, with a bunch of guys, me and my friend, with her bun in her hair, you know, they're trying to steal our accounts, and we're out to get them, and you know, the whole thing was just nasty. But that's what you did, that's what I did for a living. And God calls me to be a pastor. That's hysterical. Talk about a miracle. Because money is a temptation, is it not? And God is so funny that I make a third of what I used to make. <laughs> but I always seem to have enough money. Isn't that amazing? He says, you got other things to do. you got other things to do. So as I skip the page, I'll try to go back to that. So what does that have to do with us today? What do these miracles of deliverance have to do with us today? Jesus tells his disciples, Matthew 10. I told you I was going back. This is Matthew saying, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them what? Authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. And you say, Pastor, I am not going to go out and exercise a demon. I know someone says, I think I have a demon. I'm like, call a priest. <laughs> I'm not doing that. However, if the person says, I want you there to cleanse my house, I'll go and cleanse the house. I'll go cleanse the house. I'm not a priest. I don't have holy water. You know, holy water is just water that's been prayed over for God to bless it. You know, I'm not going to throw it on someone and they're going to go, Tss. you know. <laughs> However, there are some people that are called to do that. I am not. Thank God. No Africa for you. No demon exorcism for me. At least right now. <laughs> but I'm not saying he doesn't. So I actually have done a couple of house blessings, I call them. I don't, we don't call them cleansings. We call them blessings. And we'll walk with the dweller of the house, the owner of the house. And we'll just go through each room and we'll ask God to bless the room. And we'll say, if there's anything not of God here, I, I command you to leave in the name of Christ. Because that's what we have today. That's how the apostles were able to heal people. That's how the apostles were able to bring or deliver people from evil forces. That's how the apostles were able to say, hey, that's a temptation, and recognize it and say, get behind me, Satan. Anybody ever have to say that? Get behind me, Satan. People who are believers in Jesus Christ have the power and the authority of Christ in them. If you have someone that you know that is dealing with evil, which can be addictions, evil. Answer, evil. They might be able to take our bodies, but they're not taking our souls. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? So if you have someone that is not a believer, folks, your job is to pray, show up, be the gospel, hold their hand, talk to them, pray for them, do all of that that you can do, and then let God take over. And let God do the miracle if he chooses to do it that way. <coughs> I had a guy who said, I'm, I'm going to heal you of that thing. I told you about that already. And so that didn't happen because that wasn't what God wanted, right? Now, I believed if this was of God, then he could be used by God to heal me, right? The apostles were. They had power and authority to do that. And they healed a lot of people. If you look through the Bible, they healed a lot of people. 
But you got to have a believer on the other end. And if you don't have a believer on the end, you got to have other believers around, right? And that person's got to be like, Lord, have mercy on my son. Right? They've got to, they've got to have some kind of a, I want this to happen. And the apostles were able to heal people, although sometimes they weren't, were they? There was time in the Bible where they couldn't. You say, well, they didn't pray hard enough. Because God said, Jesus said, well, that one comes out with prayer. That demon comes out with prayer. Why it didn't happen, I don't know. The apostles are the apostles. I mean, these are these are the these are the people that followed Jesus, that touched him, that that saw him, that saw the risen Christ. And they believed. So anyway, the guy says, Hey, let's come on back and we'll get rid of that. I said, Nah, you had your chance. <laughs> I did. I said, Do you have your chance? I said, God doesn't want it that way. God doesn't want to heal it that way. That's okay. And then, right? No bad feelings, none of that. Just wasn't going to work that way. I don't believe in coming back third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time. Now somebody's making money and it ain't me. <laughs> right? If God wants to miraculously intervene and heal an issue I have going on, I'm not dying today, <laughs> by the way. Just a neck thing. Then he will. If he doesn't, then he won't. It's the way it is. But I want you to know that we have power and authority in us to pray for those, to show up as the gospel, to be the light in a dark world. That's what we are, is we are the representatives of Christ. And when you walk into a room, you bring the light of Christ with you. Even if you swore yesterday, even if you, you know, were in road rage in the car, you still bring the light of Christ with you in a room. Have you ever seen this? Have you ever had this happen? Where there's unbelievers in the room and there's believers in the room and you walk in and you say, maybe they're talking to you and you're talking about whatever. And they, you mention something about your kid going to VBS or your kid going to church or you going to church or something. They're like, oh, you're a church goer? You can get two extremes. You can get, oh, I think I said hell. I'm so sorry. Right? You get that? Right? Or you get the other extreme. I don't believe in that. It's a bunch of fairy tales. You do you. I'm going to do me. Right? I told you about the kid when we were trying to bless backpacks and I wanted to give out blessing cards and the one kid went, yeah! Oh, and I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> I said, okay, dude, you don't have to take it. And the other kid came from behind him and said, oh, I'll take one of those blessing cards. That one was weird. It was like, ah! <laughs> Pray for that kid. Do you know who recognizes, who recognized the Son of Man in all these miracles, the demons. They recognized who Jesus was. When we walk into a dark room, into a dark world, not a literally dark room, but dark, people that don't believe in Christ, we bring the light. And what does Jesus say about the light? No, it's probably not Jesus. It's probably John. He says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. We bring the light of Christ into a dark room, we bring the gospel just by the way we live. I'm not saying we're perfect, but just by the way we live. We're it, folks. We're the ones that are to go out into the dark world and to live it. So we are to pray like the father of the son who had the demon living in him. Lord, have mercy on them. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on those that are controlled by darkness. Shine your light, Christ. Let me be a miracle for someone today. And that miracle may be that they see Jesus for the very first time. Because when Jesus shows up and he rebukes the demon, what happens when Jesus shows up? The demon comes out of the boy. And you're like, I don't want to see that. No, but when you show up, you are light. And light exposes evil. And evil then is disempowered. That demon was disempowered and had no more control over that boy. Right? When there's evil forces out of the world working against and influencing people that don't know Christ, we are the light that exposes the evil and thus disempowers it. You want to be someone that brings unity because we're in a polarized world? Then when someone doesn't agree with you, don't start going for the juggler for Pete's sakes. Walk in, be the light, believe what you believe, love Christ, and use the power of God and the authority of God to expose evil. And when you do, 
it will be disempowered. That is how we get people to know Christ. That is what discipleship is all about. We have the power and we have the authority. We just got to show up, be the light, speak when necessary, live the gospel, tell the world, and ask God to have mercy on them because Satan looks like he's winning. He hasn't. We know he's defeated, but he's still in the game. And because he knows he's losing, he's going to go after everybody he can, especially you and me. So we better be prepared. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that in your name, you have given us power and authority to expose evil in places wherever we live and wherever we go. People aren't evil. Evil is evil. People are people. And most of them, the reason the way they act is because they don't know you and they've been hurt. So Lord, help us to go out and be the light in the dark world. In your power and in your authority. Amen. Amen. So that is Miracles of Deliverance. <coughs> kind of creepy. Anyway, so there's more on that. We can go into the armor of God, but we're not going to. We're going to go into the four <coughs> different categories of miracles, and then we'll look at a couple miracles a little bit more in detail as we finish out our series. So, And then it's Lent. Easter's coming up right around the corner. I know. So in the meantime, um, we're going to pray. So I want you to lift up a prayer. I would like you to try to keep it as the name of the person in the category, if you could. Because I think we start getting, you know, I mean, you can say a little bit, but let's not, remember, we're being broadcast. So unless the person has given you authority to divulge what they're having surgery for, just a name and surgery, just a name and healing, just a name for somebody fighting cancer, you know, that kind of thing. So what do we have to pray about? Dan? I need Gary. Yep. I need Ben for help. For help. Thank you. Gary and Ben for help. My brother-in-law, Jan, um, his mom died suddenly last night. She was not a healthy woman. She died last night, and he's on his way to Belgium because that's where they live. So at 2 o'clock. So um, prayers for Jan and his brother, Luke, and his dad, Roger, for grieving. Yeah. A uh, friend of mine passed away Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry. Where's all that? Little circle. Oh, when I was you? young. Aww. And um, one day I was young. One day you were young. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> so we'll pray for their family. Harold. Um, yes. Family Harold. Okay. John. Uh, Melanie Frankie who has uh, breast cancer. Okay, for cancer. Thank you. Bob. Michelle for housing. Michelle for housing. And Thank Jordan, you. And Jordan's family. <laughs> for personal. Okay. Jordan and his family. Steve. For my dad. For help? Yep. Okay. Scott? Uh, for my mother-in-law and continued healing from hypothermia surgery. Yeah, and she's doing well? Yes. Okay. She is actually. And then also my daughter as she goes to the Yeah, and she left already, didn't she? Yes. Yeah, and we want to get in process her. we want to get her address when you guys get it. So send it to me because Nancy um, will write them cards. She's the one of the ladies that writes from the church. Not yet, but when you can, yeah. let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah. My cousin Tom having brain surgery. Tom Let's for see. brain surgery. Brain cancer. Brain cancer. Okay, so for Tom, for brain cancer and for surgery. Rich? Um, prayers for bed. She's not feeling well. Okay. And uh, also I had a cat scan and everything's good. Everything's good. So a joy for Rich's cat scan. Thank you. Ellie? Really? <laughs> Happy birthday, Dale. <laughs> All right. Other prayers. Scotty? Uh, well, for birthdays, Beth uh, Harrison, 91. Is it Beth's birthday today? No, it was Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> I thought we already told her happy birthday. Okay. Thank you for that. Other prayers? Sue? Travel. Oh, going to Florida. All right. Driving, flying? Well, we'll oh, okay. All right. So for safe travel for them, have a good time. <clears throat> Bring back some sun. Brian? Carol Inman. Carol Inman. Yeah. She, she's got a little, have a little snafu, but she's okay. So it's gonna, she's going to be in the hospital a couple more weeks, but then she's ready to get home. So. Yeah. For my sister's granddaughter, Lucy. Yeah, for Lucy. 
for personal. Yes. Yeah. Today's yeah. her birthday. Today's Lucy's birthday. How old yeah. is she? 17? 16. 16. She looks like she's 25. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I know. So for Lucy, for her sweet 16. We got to smack that kid. <laughs> Joyce for health. Thank you. The Rock and the Neat Story was on the news about it. The Rock? Yep. Yeah. It was on the news. <laughs> on TV. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a joy. For some reason, they had some money at the county. It was um, COVID money, I think, and they had to give it away, um, the county commissioners did, to uh, different nonprofits for different things that help the community. And I'm like, what the heck? I'll write, it. write a little grant for our feeding programs, for our community care, for our Christmas boxes, maybe Thanksgiving boxes down the road, for our food for fuel, and then for our pantry. So um, we're going to be awarded $10,000 for that. Wow. So, um, yeah. so we're going to do some advertising for our food pantry and our Christmas boxes and community dinner. Um, we're going to beef that up so Jenna can make um, filet mignon. <laughs> Okay, maybe Swiss steak or something. <laughs> Stacy. Uh, answer prayers for our Answer chicken. prayers for your for your chickadees. Okay, good. Um, Nancy. Military. Yes, I'd like to add the police and the first responders to that. Thank you, police and first responders. And still answer for Ramona and Shelly. For Shelly and Ramona for cancer. Shelly. Hey, you got a baby on the way. Not you, yourself. A grandchild on the way. Yay. I want to express gratitude for the sunshine yesterday. And, and yeah. I know, wasn't it beautiful? And it was like, oh, hello, old friend. Yeah. Anything else? Ukraine. Ukraine, thank you. All right, let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for everything you do for us. And you ask us to go and to be the light in a dark world because there are evil forces and they are out to get believers especially. And the way they do it, they don't show up and boom, scare us behind the shower curtain. What they do is say, hey, you don't need to serve at that church. Or, yeah, you know, you don't need to do that. Or, you don't need to help. Or, you know, you got better things to do or whatever. That's how they play their tricks. So, Lord, we just thank you for your spirit. Thank you, spirit of God that lives in us and leads us to all truth and leads us to good things and leads us away from temptation. You always will give us a way out. We just got to open our eyes and see it. Lord, we pray for those that are having surgeries that are coming up, Lord. We just pray for them to go well. Brain surgery is difficult and hard. And so um, we just pray for that surgeon that's going to be working on Tom. And we just pray that he or she will be able to get all that cancer out, Lord, um, and extend his life. We pray for those that will be uh, traveling. Uh, my brother-in-law, who just lost his mom unexpectedly. She was not a healthy lady, but we just pray for him and for, for Luke, his brother, and for Roger, and, um, his dad, as they mourn the loss of Maria. She was a, a wonderful lady, and so a lady of faith, so we give you thanks for that. Pray for all of those that are going to be traveling someplace warm. <laughs> a little jealous, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, just safe travels for them. Thank you for the joys of clear test results. And Lord, we're going to pray for that little one and a half pound baby. They were born, uh, the first baby's born on the New Year's, and they were twins. And the little boy has passed, and we know he's in your loving arms. We're going to pray for that little one and a half pound little girl. Lord, if it be your will, have mercy on her little body and heal her. And we thank you, Lord, for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our offering plates are in the back, so we're going to go ahead and ask for God to bless our offerings. Please join me. Lord, we offer these gifts to you with thankful hearts and in joyous grace. As we give of our money and resources, we surrender our whole beings to you in worship and adoration. Amen. Just want to thank the Kingsmen who were able to go out and help uh, build a ramp for Eric Christensen.
reason because when he comes back from back surgery, there's no good way for him to get into his um, house. So we had the guys from the Kingsmen come and help. So thank you guys. We appreciate that. Right. Please stand join us.
remind you that I'm going to start a Chosen 2, the Chosen 2 uh, series. I think we have a slide, don't we? If not, that's okay. Um, we're going to do it on Tuesdays at 3.30. If there are more people that want to sign up and want to do it in the evening, we'll pick a night. But most of the people that sign up can come during the day. So it's going to start at 3.30, Tuesday, February 7th, right? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I would like to just make an announcement about our Christmas boxes. Yes, it's about a year away, but it will be here before we know it. And so you'll see this sign down in the corner of Access Point. You can bring in hygiene items at any time, and we will um, have them collected ahead of time and not have too much of a rush the time rate around Christmas. We're also going to have game night. This is family game night. We are hoping for um, it to be divided up so adults can play together and the kids can play together um, is the goal. And so we're looking for you to invite people. It's a community event. We would love to have people come. It's going to be a great time. Um, if you're able to come and would be interested in helping with the kids' games, we would definitely appreciate that. But if you want to come and play games, please bring a snack to share. And we will have a really great time. It is February 18th. So we're um, already planning ahead. So if you can mark your calendars, that would be wonderful. And lastly, um, you will be re receiving in the next couple of weeks a survey. If you could take a minute to fill that survey out, it just lets us know a little more about each of you individually so we can really help plug you into other small groups, other things that we're kind of thinking about. Is it really a need we need? If we um, have the people and, and just different ideas on how we can grow our church and, and outreach to others to commit and put you guys all together. So we give God the glory for all things he has done for us. Thank you. Thank you. And just a couple of things. Your caregiver meeting has moved to Thursdays now at 3 o'clock starting this week. Yep. And then we have community meal this week. So. Yes, we do have community meal. Do we know where we're eating? We're having sloppy joes. Oh, my Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for guiding us, leading us, directing us, and reminding us that we have all power and authority in us as believers to go out and to be the light for a dark world. May it be so, in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.